breaking people's jaws. I'm talking about knocking people out cold. I'm talking about broken noses. I'm talking about serious damage. KSI is even more useless than Jake Paul. I would beat KSI now. I would fight KSI right now and beat him now. So this is what Deji said himself. I don't want JJ to fight Tommy Fury. He says, I don't think it would end well for him. He says, and I've told him before, but he doesn't want to listen. That's what his own brother said to him. That's enough. That's enough. We're dropping it today. Deji doesn't believe that his brother will beat him. I want your honest opinion, bro. Honest critique of Tommy's performance against Jake Paul. I would not say great. Welcome to another episode of the Tire Come Up podcast, the number one platform for sharing stories worth telling. So if that's your kind of jam, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today, we've got a special guest, man, the strength and conditioning coach from KD Performance, the man that trained Tommy Fury for his fight against Jake Paul. Kyle, welcome to the podcast, bro. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me in, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate you giving me your time. No worries, man. There you go. A round of applause for making I it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I just want to say as well, like, it's been a, such a smooth transition or transaction dealing with you, man. I sent you one DM, you reply straight away saying, yo, I'm on it. And here we are today. So yeah. you're like one of the easiest guests to get on. So for that, bro, much respect, man. Oh, uh, no problem, man. I like what you're about. I remember you telling me, you know, what you're about, what type of people you have on. And I'm, I'm down for it, man. Ready to go. Respect, bro. So... Just to set the scene, yeah? You're the new kid on the block when it comes to strength and conditioning, right? Yep. And a lot of people got some questions, man. They want to know who this guy behind the scenes training Tommy Fury, man. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and plus on top of that, you're training Roman Fury. I see in your Instagram, like, you're training him eight in the morning. Um, we'll get into all that a bit later on, okay? Yeah. Um, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. What I want to talk about is, first of all, first of all, what is KD Performance and how did it all start? How did KD Performance start? That's a good question. Um, so starting back to the beginning for myself. Um, so I was always, you know, during school, I was always active, playing different sports. I was into my rugby, loved playing my rugby and I was always a skinny, you know, that skinny Asian guy running on the wing. And I thought, you know, I need to put some size on, man. Um, so <clears throat> started training, got into the gym, uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing at the beginning and I was just training probably about 13, 14 years old, uh, putting the work in and then I just got hooked on it. Just got hooked on being in the gym, started doing, you know, loads of bodybuilding training. Um, I was a lot bigger at the time than I, than I was now, but I wasn't um, as fit, you know. You're and a lot bigger then. then. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah not, like, not when I was 14, no, but, <laughs> you know, 16, yeah. 17. I was getting on, I put a bit of size on. Then when I got to my late teens, early 20s. Um, but then I, that, that for me, it was just about a lot of bodybuilding. Studied, went to college, um, studied sports. Did my, like, my personal training course. So I did that whilst I was in college still. And then I started, I was about 17 when I started personal training. I uh, did that for a few years. Training men, women, I was taking on everything as I could and everything, anyone I could. Um, trying to just get as much experience in as I could. Um, but prior to that, I was doing like rugby coaching as well. I've always loved boxing. So from there, I basically transitioned over from personal training into the strength and conditioning. So I started to study strength and conditioning, learning as much as I could about it. You know, there's a there's a whole lot more to learn than just personal training. Yeah, so um, you mentioned you were studying, right? Yeah, sports and exercise science. Right, wicked. And then I did my personal training course as well. Right, right. At the same time, to become qualified. As soon as I was qualified, jumped straight into the gym. I was like, yeah, new kid on the block then as well. Let's go. Got in a lot of experience as much as I could. And then for me, really, it's just progressing. You know, everybody wants to progress in life and they want to earn more money, do more things that they enjoy whilst you know, putting less time into it, you could say. Yeah. So for me, loving the boxing, loving Thai boxing, loving rugby, to now <clears throat> be able to train these sort of guys who are going into these big fights. Um, anyone in the, in the combat field, you know, is, is what I enjoy doing now. And, and for me, it's just great progression, you know, to be a part of the team, to get to go out, to go to the fights, travel to different places like Dubai, go to Saudi. Uh, go to America, go to all these different places to be part of a team. It's really uh, fulfilling for yourself, you know, and to see your actual work going in, you know, before the before the fights, we um, <clears throat> we sit down, we plan out the, the training programs and then to see the progress at the end of the camp, just before the fight, <clears throat> you know, it's a, it's a good feeling to have, man. Yeah, man. A few things to unpack there. It's good. You landed, you know, high profile clients. You went 0 to 60, bro. By the looks of it, 17, whatever, by the time you're 24 now, 
you're working with the Furies, which like I said, we'll get into a bit later on. Just to clarify though, like strength and conditioning is a specific component of a camp, for example. So like you get a head coach who does the strategy implementation on the night, you know, what to take place. You get your nutritionalist that takes care of that side of things. And then you get, you know, you get what you do, you know, which is strength and conditioning. Just for those who are not familiar with the boxing world, like just to summarize what is strength and conditioning. Okay, yeah, so to summarise strength and conditioning, in a nutshell, it's, um, I mean, it says it, the name and the title, you know, it's uh, it's it's an important part of, of any any athlete, you know, any athlete, even a golfer would need a strength and conditioning. Because we're looking to do things such as uh, prevent injuries, so we want to strengthen up the, the weak areas, we want to get that fighter as strong as possible, as fit as possible. Um, we want to work on things such as flexibility, coordination. There's a whole host, a whole big list of things, but all around it's basically trying to make that fighter as much of a, a robust, strong athlete as possible. Right. So let's say, like, for example, a YouTuber calls me out now, yeah, which we'll get into that a bit later on, yeah, in terms of the YouTube space. Um, and I come to you and I hire you as a coach. Where would you start me off? Just yeah. a starting point. Where would you start me off? That's a good question. Where would I start you off? So I would start off with the basics, you know, where, where at the foundations, what do you have? Uh, what sort of experience do you have at the minute? You know, might be none, might be a lot. We'll go from there. Look at, so if you get into a boxing fight and I know we've got 12 weeks to work on, first thing I'm going to be looking at, I'll be honest with you, is your boxing technique. You know, that's the main thing. One thing I always, you know, we have this debate. I've had this debate so many times. There's a lot of people out there still that do not believe in strength and conditioning. There's a lot of people, you know, a lot of the old school fighters, they don't believe in strength and conditioning. And I can understand where they're coming from because you never saw, you know, uh, you know, your Muhammad Ali's and your, and your Evander Holyfield's and Lennox Lewis. You didn't see all these guys doing certain exercises that we do now. But obviously people need to realize that as with time, you know, science grows, knowledge grows these things need to be implemented into the sport. Yeah, so where would I start you off? I'd start you off with the basics. I'd Like I said, I'd work on your boxing performance first and I'd see where you're at. Because if you've got a fight in, in three, four months and you can't even punch, I'm sure you can, brother, yeah. but say you couldn't even punch <laughs> yeah. and, and hit it, you know, throw a right hand, that's going to be the biggest issue, you know. Never mind getting in the gym and, and, and getting strong. That's going to be your biggest issue. So that's what I would work on. And then I would look at things like your flexibility, um, even just your technique, you know, um, and then obviously then it will go into your conditioning and how fit you are heading into that ring. We want to make sure that your engine is going to hold you and be able to, you know, work for the, the that's whole That's key fight. in the engine is like a common one, right? To last you the whole 12 yeah, rounds. 100%, 100%. Yeah. That's a big one because there's a lot of people that are getting into the ring. Yeah. And, you know, it's different, like, you know, they gas out a lot quicker than you think. You, yeah. You'd think that you'd be able to get into the ring and you'll do, you know, 12 rounds when you're sparring. But when people get under the lights, there's other pressures there that people aren't normally used to, you know. And that drains them itself, you know, mentally draining. If yeah. you're not breathing correctly whilst you're fighting, you're going to lo lose you, sorry, a lot more energy than your opponent is if he's cool, calm, collected you know, your your energy is going to be running low. So there's many, many things you got to think about when you go into a fight like that. That's mad that, yeah. So I like your tagline on Instagram, which is train with intention. So basically what you're saying, depending on the results that your clients want to achieve, will determine the program you're going to put them on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, everyone I train at the moment, every single person has different goals. For me, it keeps me on my toes, keeps me learning things. Sometimes I get asked things by fighters, you know, and um, I won't have an answer, you know? I don't know everything, you know? Like yeah, you yeah, said, I'm learning still. I don't know everything. And I get sometimes asked questions and I'll just say, I'll get back to you, you know? But that isn't anything to be ashamed of, you know? When, yeah, you know Tim Grover? No. Uh, so Tim Grover is Michael Jordan's uh, personal trainer. Right, right. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he does like motivational talks and things like that. But I've read a few of his books. He's got a good book called Relentless and he's got a good podcast. Um, and he's, he's got, if you ever look at him on YouTube, he's got loads of good things. And Tim Grover says, um, he says, same what I just said, he used to get asked things by Michael Jordan and he wouldn't know what to say. So he said... He'd say, right, I'll tell you tomorrow. And that 24 hours from when he got asked that question, he said he would do as much research as he as he physically could on that topic. And he would come back to him the next day with an answer. And look, that's one of the best athletes of potentially all the all time. 
you know, um, who everyone, everybody knows about Michael Jordan, you know, and if you don't, you've probably got a pair of his shoes on your feet, you know, yeah. so that's it. Now, that, to be honest, that shows humility, bro. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. in order to be the best at what you want to do, you need to have an attitude where you don't know it all. If you have an attitude, you know it all, how are you going to learn, be a sponge, absorb, and like you said, with the time, you need to grow. So that's that's a fantastic quality to have, bro. That's it, bro. No, I rate you, I rate you, man. A random thought came into my to my mind, bro. Um, you train fighters, yeah, to get into peak performance, right? And could you mention there something about when they on their lights on the on fight night, they get drained a bit quicker, right? So that's your job to get them in peak performance condition, right? What comes to my mind randomly, by the way, is um, Anthony Joshua and Usyk, because. He has he has all the physical attributes to dominate Usyk, bro. Obviously, it, it didn't go the way he planned, but let's get real, bro. My man would have smashed him back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would have. You know, that's that's a good so, topic to talk about. Hundred percent. No, no. I'm just gonna say, you know, feel free to add. Um, I want to get your opinion on this because obviously, since his defeat to Ruiz, he ain't the same fighter, man. No. So you can't teach that, can you? And you could see after the Usyk fight, the second fight, he got frustrated after the ring. But yeah, like you say, it's not something you can teach. I think Joshua, you know, all respect to Joshua, what a good fighter he is. 100%. You know, I've got nothing but respect for Joshua. Vice versa, by the way. Just yeah. an objective fact, we're just critiquing, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. He's, he's, he's a great fighter. He's done good things in the, in, in the history of boxing. He's just never going to go down as a great... You know, he's not Ooh. one of the greats. He's really? not one of the greats. I don't think he's one of really? the greats. Really? That's a bit harsh. <clears throat> I still think he'd go down as one of the greats. From oh, Britain, fight, at least. from Britain, well, one of the greats of this generation, but not of all time. No, he's, no, no. I he's never going to go yeah, down a great of all time, is what I meant to say. Okay. Uh, he'll be one of the greats of Britain in this period, in this, yeah, in yeah. this era, yeah. but he's never, ever going to be a great of all time. You know, maybe he might see this and uh and and make me eat my words we'll see but you know like i said yeah he had the ruiz fight he lost that you know they said that his head wasn't there this and that could have been the case but you know you've got two three four five six seven eight months to prepare for a fight you know you should be ready to go um with the usic with the usic loss you know that was um that was just down to skill that was just purely down to skill if you see how joshua fights he he, he walks forward a lot um, if you look at his shoulders before he throws his shots, you can see what type of punches he's going to throw. He does no fainting. He does no head movement. Um, Usyk has it all. Yeah, Usyk's a lot smaller than him. Usyk, what a fighter he is. Usyk is technically one of the best fighters out there. You know, he's... And there's not anyone who can argue with that. He's technically one of the best fighters. He'll have a great fight with Tyson Fury. I don't think he'll beat him, but it'll be a good fight. Um, so yeah, the Joshua for him, and I think he definitely does need. Uh, he's probably he's obviously he love a sports psychologist, but I feel like he needs, um, you know, he needs obviously someone to just sit down with him, have a little chat, see what's going on. He needs to, he needs that hunger back, you know. Even a lot of other boxers are critiquing him and saying he's not got it anymore. He's not this. He's not that. He needs to just. Um, he needs to either decide whether he wants to have that hunger back and come for the belts, come for everything, and then he needs to fight um, like Wilders. Uh, Furies, you know, he needs to be taking these fights or he needs to just call it a day. You know, you've made enough money now. You've beat, you know, you've become world champion. Um, he needs to just call it a day now. Do you think if he didn't have that defeat to Ruiz, he would have beat Usyk? Never beat Usyk. Really? Yeah. I reckon he would have devoured him because of his size and because he cause just, just already gave him a hard time. Yeah, bullying yeah, him in the no, ring. No, he did, he did. And he the did. skill, obviously the, the class in skill showed in the later rounds. But beginning, Chisora is naturally being a bigger man. Chisora is a big boy, isn't he? yeah, yeah. It's a big yeah. boy, man. Have you seen his thingy, by the way? Delicious TV. Delicious TV. You got yeah, some man, funky yeah, question, man. man. Yeah, that's that's a... <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's fun. It's it. That's but yeah, man. sorry. Back to the question. Yeah, man. So what do you think? Like, yeah, sorry, you said no, didn't you? You said no. He wouldn't be. You know, him. listen. My opinion is no. I don't think he would ever beat you, sick. But one thing I'm always open to in my mind is that it's boxing. And it's heavyweight boxing. One punch, it's game over. You know, these these boys can all punch. And the big, big boys, you know. So one punch, it can be over. So, yeah, anyone can beat anyone. But I just think with the skill that Usyk has, I don't think he would have been beat. But if Joshua goes in as that old, hungry Joshua who we saw against, you know, um, even like your Klitschko's, if he was that sort of Joshua, 
Then he could have. He could have cleaned him out and finished him. Um, but I think for me, it's just pinning him down. The thing is, he throws no feints and he throw, and he doesn't move his head. He, he throws no feints and he does not move his head. So when you're fighting a man like Joe Joyce, then you're just going to have a big... It's just going to be a, a dog fight. It's just going to be who can take the most damage. But when you're fighting a man who is, is technically as gifted as Yusik is... Then you're gonna have a long night, you know. He'll just dance around you all night. He's quicker than you. He's faster than you. He's probably not as powerful, but he has everything else you need. And Joshua even said at the end of the fight, he said something. I can't remember what it was, word for word, but he said something like, um, "How did you beat me? How did you beat me? I've got. Yeah, yeah. I'm stronger than you. I'm bigger than you. How did you beat me?" He got frustrated, yeah, and you could yeah, see yeah. he couldn't work out how these small guys like Ruiz and and Usyk, you know, he struggles with shorter people to fight. Bear in mind, Usyk's not a natural heavyweight. No, he went, he went up. He went there up, you didn't know. he? It's mad. Yeah, the guy is 100% gifted, man. Yeah, no, no question about it. You touched upon Tyson Fury and Usyk. You're in the mix with these guys. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, straight up, why has that fight not happened? Ah, as far as I know, I think it's to do with money. People are wanting too much money. It's to do with where it's going to be. Saudi or don't know if you heard about Dubai or England. Now Tyson's come out a few days ago and just said, I want it in Wembley. So it's Wembley or nowhere. And I think the split's like 70-30. It's a 70-30 split. Mad. It's one of them where to a lot of people, I think, yeah, that's a, that's a crazy split. But at the same time, you got to think to yourself, all respect to Usyk. Usyk ain't selling out no big stadiums in England. How would you respond to him having majority of the belts? That's that's the other question. How do I how do I respond to that? I know you're tight with the Furies, right? <laughs> yeah. And I ain't got that. Without I, I being biased, Furies, bro. Yeah. Without being biased, innit? <laughs> without, being biased. <laughs> without being biased, bro. Without being biased. So half of those belts Fury had when he beat uh, Klitschko, which were then stripped off of him. And then Joshua went and beat Klitschko, didn't he? And then he took the belts, if, if I remember correctly, something along those lines. So Joshua now has all those belts. U6 now beat him and taken those belts off. So the way I see it is, by default, U6 technically, yeah, does have the belts because he beat Joshua, but Fury's never, ever been beaten to lose them belts. He's never technically ever been beaten. And also, he was the first man to end um, Klitschko's 10-year-plus reign of being undefeated at the top. Joshua beat him with a with a nasty uppercut and nearly I don't know what, you know, that could have ended badly. He beat him with a horrible uppercut, but you need to remember before this, Fury went to his backyard and beat him mm. on points. I I would never ever have said, you know, you know how it, how it works in boxing. If you go to somebody else's backyard and you're on points, you know, you better expect to lose that fight, you know. Even if you've clearly beat him, we've seen worse robberies. So it's one of them, isn't it? The split that Fury wants is uh, it's questionable, depending on who you ask. If it was me, I'd probably do something similar. You know, all the cards are in my hand, you know. At the end of the day, I'm the one selling the tickets. I'm the one people want to come and see. I'm I'm the star of the show. Yeah. So I call the shots. I do think the fans want to see that, though. I think they will sell it out regardless. Yeah. But then at it's the same the time, fights, it is re I, want, I would be reasonable as being Fury. I would be slightly reasonable to think, you know what? I've got more money than I, I need. Let me just get this this undisputed heavyweight champion and no one can ever ask yeah, me any questions. Yeah, isn't, because this isn't about money anymore. It's about legacy. That's it. It's the Hall of Fame. It's the all-time greatest, greatest we talked yeah, about there before. Go. There yeah. you go. All right, we'll see what happens. While we're in the Furies, we'll go, go, go back to the strength and conditioning. So wh why, how did that come about? Like, how did you, you went to, like I said, not to 60, yeah, landed yeah, yeah, yeah. a Fury from it the looks, outside? Yeah, yeah. It looks so, I mean, way. from the outside, it looks like not to 60, 100%, of course yeah. it does. It looks like not to 60. Um, you know, I get asked that a lot, but like I say, people don't see the hard work that you put in the background, you know. Um, you know, I've known of the family for, for a while now. Um, I've always been in there. We've got mutual friends, you know. Um, so when you say family, friends, is that through school? Is it through living in the same area? Yeah, so like the same area. So for example, me and Tom, we've known each other for years. Um, we've known a Roman for years as well. Uh, but funny enough, they never used to train with me. You know, they, 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 they've always obviously had the boxing coaches and then they both used to train with other people. And then f over time, I just said, listen, they, they know what, I've always gone this route. With all without them, I've I've just followed my route because that's what I'm passionate about. And then um, it was actually after Tom's 
Anthony Taylor fight. It was after his Anthony Taylor fight. He basically, how it, what happened is he had he had he had a fight with Anthony Taylor. Did you see that fight? I did see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. over in Cleveland. And you know, I'm a I'm a hard critique on him. You know, and we'll I get to that later, said, though. We'll yeah, get to that yeah, later. We'll get to that later. I, won't, I won't reveal too much yet, but uh, basically, it got to a point where he was stiff. He was big. And he was basically training as a bodybuilder for a, a, a boxing fight. And I said, what's going on, brother? You know, there's many, many changes you can make here. Lots of improvements to make. Because, you know, when, I, when I'm when i watching boxing fights, like I need to go and watch the uh, Loma Gencho and um, Haney fight. I'm going to go and watch that later on. But I, I look and I think, how could that be, perf- you know, how could they improve their physical performance? Um, so that's what I did with, with Tom and Taylor as well. And then we got to a point where we just said, look, you know, come down, let's do a session, see how you get on. Uh, if you enjoy it, you know, stay around. Obviously, in my head, I was thinking to myself, yeah, hopefully he stays on. We don't know yet. But put. You're confident in your ability, your knowledge that you acquired, you're confident. 100% I was yeah. confident. I'm always going in there. I was going back in myself and I just thought to myself, you know, we have this 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 friendly relationship. By the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm not going to just, and I, I knew in my head, he's not going to just train with me because we know each other, it isn't like that, you know. And yeah. at the end of the day, if you're getting into a ring and you've got somebody you know of who's a, not the best coach or you've got a guy out there who is a top quality coach, it doesn't matter who you know personally, you're getting in the ring to get your head punched off. You're yeah. going to go with whoever's best for you, whoever you think you can really develop with, improve with and, and bond with and work with. But at the same time, it was the same for me because obviously I, I wanted to get hold of him and train him and and, and and improve him as much as I can. But, you know, at the same time, you'll be surprised, but there's a lot of people that you can't work with and train. You know, you might come into the gym and we just can't, we don't we don't gel, we don't work together. So when people come into the gym, we always um, do a consultation. I like to just get to know somebody, get to know their goals, like to see if their goals are realistic. And sometimes you just won't be on the same page, you won't work and it's not an issue. It just means I'm not the right coach for you and just you're not, not the right client for me. Exactly, yeah. same with everything yeah. in life. So I came in. We did a session. Big John came down as well. Oh, Big John came down. So you I had the extra John pressure. Fury, man. <laughs> I love that guy, man. <laughs> you had the extra pressure there, Big John. And uh, yeah, we come down. We did a session. John loved it. Uh, Tom loved it. And we've never looked back since then. How did you feel when the eyeballs were on you, man? Because John's a big critique. He just says it how it is. Oh, yeah, I knew he that. He, he was just sat there. And he wasn't like just knocking around the gym. He was sat there. <laughs> eyes on eyes yeah, on yeah. felt like a hawk yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah, i felt yeah. like i was being watched by a hawk but listen i just cracked on did my role did my job i know if you know he asked me about anything i can tell you why we are doing this like i said we're training with intention we're, we're, we're doing this for a reason um and and there's always going to be a reasoning behind it i always think to myself why 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 so yeah he came down we trained and um he loved it and we've never you know and he's never looked back since uh, and then every time now we fight prior and after a, uh, a fight we sit down we talk about your last performance at your fight what you think we can do moving forward and we analyze the fight um, we watch it and then we'll talk about it and i'll say right i don't like this 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 i think you can do this 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 and then he'll tell me and then we we agree and we work on a plan moving forwards together so it's not just like i see everything that i think needs to, to be improved and uh, and then i just tell him this this and this we talk about it we discuss it because how you know fighters are different mentally and you know me and tom we know each other to to i've, I've learned enough about him now to know how he functions and how he works so i know to develop and him as a fighter he needs to understand why he's doing this this and this to get to there whereas some fighters just want to be told no you need to do that that and that you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. some people want to know the reason and the understanding behind it whereas some people just don't care and just want to get on with the hard work and like i said i know how he works mentally and that works best for him but yeah he came in we trained he enjoyed it and and since then if you watch his performances after that you know you will see a big 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 difference you know he's not as stiff you know, yeah, he's a lot yeah. more fluid. He's a lot more smooth. He's a lot more, even just the, the shape of him. If you go into my Instagram account and you can look, you'll see a transition from his uh, fight with Taylor and then his fight after that. You can see his transition on the scales. He's a similar weight, but he's a lot more lean. He's a lot more athletic look. He seems a bit looser. Yeah, he's, he's a got a bit more, more range of motion exactly. in his punching and stuff like that. So the first thing, one of the first things that we did when, we, when, I, when I took him over is I said, look, I said, at a minute, your range of movement is, you know, 
it's limited. You know, you're very tight, um, and we're going to need to work on that because, as you know yourself, you know, the more range of movement a fighter has, the more powerful the punch is going to be. You know, so for example, he he, he's, he fights. He's an orthodox fighter. He can mix it up, but he's orthodox. He keeps his right hand up. So his right hand, he's, he's always jabbing with his left. His right hand's always it locked in. So his right shoulder yeah. is actually tighter from there. So we did a few tests, and he was about 25, 30% tighter on his right shoulder than his left. So we've done loads of stretches now. To, to We've done loads of stretches and exercises to basically just increase that range of motion because we know the more range of motion he's going to get, the more power he's going to get into his punches. And, um, yeah, the, you know, it, it does. Yeah, because the, the man can see. jab. There was, a, there was a flipping uh, YouTube video of him before the Jake Paul fight punching that that punch, you know, that machine that you press to the button, it comes yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did a lot of jab. It's like got eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Badness in it. Um, so, what what does the exercise look like? Just obviously, don't want to go into detail, but just like a basic exercise because I need to do that myself. To be honest with you, I'm I'm stiff from my shoulder. So, what what would I need to do to loosen that up? Um, so, one thing that we actually started doing with him was. Um, I'm quite close with a yoga instructor that I work with. So right. we got him actually doing a lot of yoga to start. Um, he was doing a lot of yoga on his upper body just to warm up. We was making sure that before sessions, we was properly stretching. So I'm talking to 10, 15 minutes in the shoulder area. Um, but we're warming up the anterior as well as the posterior. So he's getting his full chain warmed up, ready to go. Whereas before this, he wasn't actually, he wasn't doing much warm ups at all. He was going into the gym. He was training like a, like a, like Ronnie Coleman, and then he was coming back out and then going to his boxing. So prior and post every single session, now we're doing in depth warm ups, cool downs, um, and then we've got other sort of exercises. We do things on the exercise ball, um, and we work also on obviously increasing the range of mo uh, range of movement. Like I said, in his posterior chain, so obviously all his back, because back, just as much hamstrings, everything, just because right. just as much as punching, okay, and pushing and extending is is important in in boxing. You obviously also need to think about how quick you can pull back and rotate across. So right. we do a lot of movement, which is rotating. So as the arms coming out, obviously the left's coming back, and then we're rotating across the full body using your core rotation and then we're rotating straight back across. So the quicker and the snappier you can make that, you can make that um, transition. Transition. Basically the the more fluid, the more power you're gonna generate. And like we said before, the more range of movement you're gonna get into your punch. Well, one thing I struggle with is recovery, bro. Yeah. Right, between my workouts. Right, after a hard session, obviously I do weights mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm flipping, I don't know if you play a part in recovery. Yes, yeah, so we do uh, set amounts of recovery, so... What does it look like? Is it like ice baths or yeah, so things like that? He does, he's got, um, he does a lot of recovery himself, but he does things like, like I said, the cooling down is the first stage of the recovery. He never used to cool down, so now he's doing 10 to 15 minutes minimum of just stretching every single day. Right, just right. Just to keep him loose, because this man does a whole lot of weights. And I don't know if people have seen, but between fights, yeah. you know, he blows up. You know, you're talking, he puts two, three stone on. Of just, yeah. you know, a lot of it's muscle, a lot Pretty of it's tall, six foot, right? Yeah, 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 yeah he's, he's not massive. a small guy. And he's, it's his frame. That's how he holds it. His frame is just huge. Yeah, he does his stretches. Yeah, he does his ice baths as well. And he also, um, he goes between the ice bath and the sauna. Right. Um, and then he has like a day of rest. You know, so we'll just have one day where he just fully recovers, resting normally like a Sunday. Um, he'll just have a full day of rest, and then I guess he just spends time with his family. So that is basically, that's how he recovers himself. Um, I need to add the stretches in, man. Just yeah, like that's it, bit. the stretches. Yeah, and yeah. sports massages as well, sorry. Yeah. He does a lot of, uh, he does like sports massages, depending on what workouts he's done, and depending on how close to the fight he is, depends on how long and what type of sports massage he'll get. So for example, you know, two days before a fight, he's not going to get a sports massage and just get completely, get his muscles destroyed. You know, they need time to then recover, to then be able to grow, to be able to to then be able to be used as you want to, to with yeah. maximal effort, yeah, maximal performance, you know? Juicy question. How do you balance between being friends and getting the job done? Yeah, um... Or is it just strictly business when you walk in the gym? It's strange, yeah. Like you say, you know, it's it's not hard at all. Yeah. You know, it's strictly business. You know, once we walk into that gym, you know, sometimes we'll have a little laugh before the session. 
you know, we'll have, we'll, uh, we'll bust a few jokes to each other. And then, you know, as soon as, as soon as it hits half six, you know, half six in the morning, we're straight to work, you know, there's no, there's no games, no jokes. We just work through it. Talk minimally throughout the workout. After the session, we'll have a laugh, maybe go and grab some breakfast, just crack on, you know, That's it's good. not hard to do at all. We, we both know why we're there. You know, we know why we both know why we're there. There's no messing around. He knows that he, I'm there as as you know, employed as a coach to do my job to get him, uh, you know, as, as as ready as he can be to get into that ring. And he knows that he's there as an athlete to train and get the work in. But like I say, he's not hard to yeah. work with at all. That, that's good, man. When you both got the same drive and you know what you want to achieve, ultimately you're serious about that. You both got we you're going towards a certain direction. It you want to be a good recognize strength and conditioning coach he wants to be the best in this game so it's good that was helping it yeah, you're both yeah. serious when we it comes to business together, bro. Just we just together. gel together and we just work on yeah man and i think one of the best things for that for for the both of us is is that the little sit downs that we have before a camp and after the camp because that really that really kind of defines and 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 sets in stone why we're both here you know it, we're here because you want to reach here and I can tell you and show you how we're going to get there. And so that kind of gels us together as a as a coach and client slash fighter relationship. Okay, fair enough, man. I'm going to ask you a tough question that you might get in the future. You've already answered it, to be fair, right? Basically, you touched upon where you learned your specialised knowledge from, right? Yeah. What, what makes you qualified to be the trainer of a fighter like Tommy Fury or the likes of which? What makes me qualified? I would say, I would say the relationships are built up over time as well as my my own drive. And I would say, I would say a lot of it would be deep down to my own qualities and my own character. Because if I wasn't as hungry as I was, and I didn't have the drive that I had. I don't think I would be in the situation where I am. You know, I don't think I would be in a situation where I'm training high level professional athletes where I am if I didn't get the experience I did because before this you know I was working with a lot of amateurs just learning my trade you know I was working with amateurs I wasn't getting paid nothing you know I was just working out and just basically trialing out exercises to be honest with you you know I've had times where I branched over from the personal training it's good that I had the personal training because that kind of gave me a background that gave me a, a foundation to build up on so that was that was good and then when I started to go into the strength and conditioning now I was sometimes working with people just trying out exercises and then I would train myself and just try like exercises see where I, what muscles I can feel working if I felt like that one was effective if it wasn't so I'd say the experience I've put in and the drive that I have myself to just never stop you know I'm always on top of him you know yeah. we're always there we're always ready to train we're always talking about future plans, future progressions, where we're going to take these sessions. And then when he's finished, when he's finished up and he goes home and he goes and has a sleep because he's finished his strength and conditioning, then I'll be in the gym and I'll be typing up notes of what results we got, what lifts we got. I would say myself being proactive as far as a strength and conditioning coach goes, I'm very proactive. So I like to, like I said earlier, I like to always tell him where he's at where I want him to be and how we're going to get there. And because of that, he's told me in the past he's had that. He's not had that with a lot of coaches. So that's how I think we gel. And with the progressions that we already make now, I feel like we're onto a good thing. Yeah, no, I think you sold yourself short, man, because clearly you know your stuff, number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know your stuff. That's number one. You've got the knowledge there. Secondly, you had John Fury watching you, right? So obviously he's not going to put his son through some shady guy right some cowboy who doesn't know what he's doing uh, and i'll put some footage on youtube man for the, you guys watching on youtube um of the work the type of work that he's been doing it's really good bro you know what you're doing yeah, and it, before bro like you you know what the outcome is and then like i said before you, you formulate a solid plan on how you're going to get your fighters there yeah do you know what I mean? and you've yeah, got yeah. the experience you work with the elite fighters like these guys at a young age on top of that you're working with other fighters like MMA fighters, boxing, and you're like a sponge. You're like, you, you have the humility to say, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I think that's a good quality, bro. So just to add to that, man, um, I know he's not paying me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, <clears throat> let's go on to another juicy topic, bro. And I want your honest opinion, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your boys with Tommy Fury, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 
and I ain't saying too much because you might have him on the podcast in the future. You never know, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I let you talk in it, yeah. Honest critique of Tommy's performance against Jake Paul. Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> honest, <clears throat> honest critique. Okay, so um, I would say, I would say it was good. Yeah, I would say taking everything into account, it was good. Um, yeah, I agree. I would not say great. And like I said, I critique him quite, uh, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite tight when I, when I critique him, you know, I will, there's many reasons for this, <clears throat> but I'm looking at it from a different perspective, which a lot, apart from the team, no one else would have it. So when there's been times where we've been in a gym and he's been sparring and he's been, um, you know, and, and he's been hitting the pads from what I've seen, I feel like he could go in for a British title. You know, he's looking, he was looking great, you know, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about breaking people's jaws. I'm talking about knocking people out cold. I'm talking about, you know, broken noses. I'm talking about serious damage. Um, towards I, the build-up of this fight. Yeah, towards right. the build-up of Jake Ball's fight. And I've, he's never done that in any of his other camps before. And, you know, you got to remember, he's had this fight hanging over his head for, what is it, two, three years? So I think there was a lot of bad intentions between the two of them. So I would say from what I saw myself throughout sparring and throughout training and even the week of the fight, how he was hitting the pads and his head movement and his foot placement and how he was letting go of his shots. He was, my my opinion is he was fighting probably about half of his ability. I think he was fighting. Night. Yeah, I think he was about half of his ability and he still beat him. And the reason why I say that, I don't say that, um, I think it was the pressure, to be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I feel like if they fought again, I think it'd be very, very different. I think the pressure of the fight. Um, for, for those that don't understand what you mean by pressure, you're talking about him on the limelight, under the limelight. Yeah. This is a build up for like two years. Things happen. Yeah, develop the a hate for each other for two years, you know, and I, I, you know, anytime, Tom walks down the street, you know, it's when he's fighting Jake Paul. I can imagine it's probably similar for the Jake Paul, you know, when he walks down the street, when you're fighting Tom, they've had each other on each other's minds, probably gone to bed next to the missus, thinking about each other, you know, about what they're gonna do to each other. So the pressure, yeah, of the lights, of the occasion, of the, you know, Jake Paul's done this, he's not new to cameras, lights, action. You know, he's been doing this since he was a child on Disney Channel, you know? Tom's in the light, his camera's action now, yeah, but he's not used to it like he was, you know. That, at the time, was the biggest, one of the, well, it's the biggest, probably, influencing fight out there. I don't know if it was bigger than KSI in, uh, and Logan Fournier. Paul. Oh, sorry, okay. And, uh, it was bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fournier, that was a load of rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> but I went, I went down to that as well, but that was a load of rubbish. We'll come to that, we'll come after. to that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it was bigger than the, than the Logan Paul and the KSI, but all I know is, like I said, I think he was fighting at half of his of his potential. Um, and I think if they fought again, I think it would be very different because he's already beat him now. He doesn't have the, the stress. You know, it's very easy for us to say, get in the ring, knock him out cold and walk out. But at the end of the day, Jake Paul, he's not a small guy. You know, he's a big set guy. He actually looked bigger than Tommy on the he, night. Yeah, he's a big guy. And at the end of the day, like I said to you earlier, boxing is boxing. It's yeah. two boys in the ring and it, it, it takes one punch. One punch in the right place, you're going to be getting knocked out. In my head, that was never ever a thought because I knew that Tom was going to beat him. But we can't talk on behalf of a fighter. And as a fighter getting into that ring, I can't talk on behalf of those because we don't know what that feels like to think that if anything ever happened and if, if there was any slip ups, let's be honest, your whole career is done. Yeah, you're finished. You are yeah. finished. So to fight with that amount of pressure on you, I, I don't know what it's like. And then you've got people ringside like Mike Tyson, Devin Haney, who's just fought one of the best in the world, Ronaldo. You know, was it Ronaldo? Ronaldo there? was I there. Didn't know he was yeah, there. Yeah, Ronaldo was there. Jeez. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got all of these people around watching you. And you know, a few years ago, he was probably looking up to these guys. Obviously, Mike Tyson. You know, Devin Haney. These guys are legends. You know. Um, Plus, you got the marketing aspect of it, like his, you know, changing your name to Fumbles. His dad, obviously the dads are marketing, uh, his dad and Tyson are marketing geniuses, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. never disowned their, obviously, brother and kid. But the, that aspect of it, though, like, gonna leave you in Saudi if you don't perform. To be Ronaldo's 
physio or whatever. PC, whatever. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's, that's pressure. And on the night, you're walking towards the ring, people are taking videos. If you get knocked out, you're making, you're becoming a meme, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, what, the, that's pressure. what this media is like, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's mad. So I totally get where it's coming from. So what you're saying totally makes sense, man. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> that's, that's what it gets like, though. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You're becoming a meme, bro. In this These day and age, though, you slip up once. It's <laughs> a meme, innit? it? You Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, I totally, yeah, that makes sense, man. So you think it was a psychological 100%. aspect of it rather than physical? 100%. I feel if if... Jake Paul and Tom had a spar in a ring yeah. with just a few, few of the team around, a few, of the, you know, the teams around them. I think it would have been a completely different, yeah. a completely different. Between me and you, I lost a lot of money, bro, on on this fight. So as I was that confident in the knockout, I put down some money right on a bet. How much are we talking? I put two grand down. Two on G's. A bet. I put two G's down on a bet. I started off with it with a grand right, and I thought to myself, look. He's gonna knock him out. What, what I've been seeing is he's like an animal. You know, he's getting in this ring, and I, honestly, he could have fought for a title. He was looking, you know, great. And I thought to myself, I just put down a grand, and then the guys were like, "You sure? Are you sure?" They were like, well, "I'm just gonna go safe, and I'm just gonna put down. I'm just gonna put down that he's gonna win." And I thought, no, I believe in, I believe in him, and I believe that the work that KD performance has done. Standard. He's going to bring me some money yeah, back. Yeah. Obviously, I was wrong. But listen, he got the win. <laughs> That's all that matters. And at the moment, and when we was at the fight and it went past, I said he was going to knock him out within six rounds. And as uh, the sixth round finished, the money was not on my mind. I didn't even care about that. All I was interested in is that he was going to knock him out at some point of the fight. So like I said, that is how much confidence I had that he was going to knock him out clean, done, finished. And you know, at the, at the end of the fight, I said to Jake Paul, I said, look, I said, it's a fair play. So fair play to you. I said, I lost some money thinking that you were gonna get knocked out cold. He just said to me, no, respect, man. That was it. He was just a bit of he was just in one of them moods. Yeah, he was just he was just humbled and, and, and annoyed and gutted of, as you would be. So he was just like, Oh yeah, appreciate it, man. And that was it. You know, but I had to respect him because he went in there better than I thought he was gonna be. Yeah. You know, Do uh, you think there's an element of underestimating Jake Paul involved? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Tom said that himself. That Jake Paul. Um, He's better than he thought he was. Better than he thought he was. But, but that, we all thought he was better than he was. Honestly, he he, he was. He looked good. You know, he looked good. He looked he, decent, didn't it? He looked. Yeah. I wouldn't say he great, good. but he. Yeah, yeah. For the amount of experience and what he's had, he looked good, man. You know. Um, he, he, he looked good. Um, people are saying he knocked him down, this and that. It was a slip. You could see he jabbed him and he, and then he slipped over. He got straight back up. I think if they go again, um, then it's basically, it's, it'll be trouble. You know, I think they should definitely do it again. Run it back, you know what I mean? Run it back for the fans, run it back for the, the pockets. Get your money back. <laughs> That's it, yeah, get our money back. <laughs> <laughs> so based on like what you're seeing to date, do you think he has what it takes to go all the way to the top? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. He, I, I definitely believe in him to become a world champion. I think he's got the right people around him. I think he's got the right experience to then go on and do good things. Uh, at the moment, I think he's probably one of the most inactive fighters there is at the moment, um, which obviously that needs to be changed. But I don't know where his head is at the moment right now, whether, you know, I don't know how long he's going to do this YouTube boxing for. I don't know whether he's going to go into the, carry on with the YouTube or when he's going to then transition back into boxing. I know at some point he's going to, but right now, uh, you know, a lot of these professional boxers are probably not a fan of him right now because of the way he's taking the boxing. But at the end of the day... Listen, if you're cleaning up that much money, why wouldn't you? Well, put it this way, right? If it was me, am I going to am I gonna fight, you know, uh, KSI or Jake Paul, who are absolutely no threat at all? Am I going to fight them for 5, 10 mil? Or am I going to fight a scary Russian who's been boxing since he was one years old or just fresh out the womb, am I going to fight him for 200 grand? You know, it doesn't make sense, does it? You know, yeah, times yeah. have moved on now, you know. So if it was me, I'd be contemplating what I'm going to do in the future. But but Mayweather, he's still doing exhibitions, man, for the money. Just for the money, you know, you know what I mean? He's still but cleaning up. Mayweather's in a different, you know, Mayweather has been at, True. at the top, True. at the best yeah. for so long, yeah, yeah. whereas Tom has to prove himself. True. He hasn't done that. <laughs> Yeah, you know. So that leads us on to the the whole YouTube scene, man. Like, what's your thoughts on the whole YouTube scene when it first arrived on the scene versus yeah. now? Because for me, it was like, oh, they're making a mockery of boxing. But now I've warmed up to it, and you you can't help but to like 
you know, be part yeah. of this whole yeah, circuit yeah. So that's you, going so on. you're a fan of it now, yeah? At, at the moment, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, listen, yeah. If, uh, if you want to make some money, bro, like, listen, call me out. Now's the time. That's it. Man's in his 30s, so this is the time. This Don't call me time. out when I'm 40, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> this is the time to do yeah, it. 10 years. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so what's your thoughts then versus now? Um, well, when it just come out, to be honest with you, and it was KSI and Logan Paul who started it off, I don't, I didn't even watch that fight. I was not interested in it at all. Um, I can't remember who was after that, but in a nutshell, I, I like it, man. Yeah. I like it. Even then, even when it first arrived in the scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, at the end of the day, if two guys have some problems between them, and they want to get into a ring and put on a pair of gloves and sort it out, I've got nothing but respect for them. You know, it's better than pulling a, a knife out like people do nowadays and, and you know, um, people end up dying. People ended up really injured, you know. So for me, if any guys have issues and want to get into the ring, I have nothing but respect for it. Um, at the time, nobody realised how big it was going to get. You know, now it's like a full a full route that you can go down, you know. Um, so for me, I like it. I like I like the YouTube route. I think it's, it does a lot for boxing. It's bringing new eyes into boxing. It's bringing more money into boxing. Um, <clears throat> new so, opportunities, new era. Yeah. That, it's just changing direction kids, in some ways, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And a lot more kids have got into boxing through uh, KSI and Logan Paul and, and Jake Paul and these guys. So you know what? Fair play <clears throat> that they're getting more people into the, into the sport of boxing. Um, you know, obviously boxers on the other hand might see it differently, but you need to, they need to just relax and realize that they aren't trying to be professional boxers winning world titles. You know, KSI said he wants to be the best in the whole YouTube boxing scene. So just leave him over there. He's earning more money than you guys anyway. So just let it, leave him over there, let him earn his money and just, and just keep it as it is, you know? So I don't Bro, think it's harmful for anyone. It, it just shows nowadays, yeah. A social media following is worth more than a Cambridge degree. Think about it, bro. Like, just just internalize that for a second. You having a social media following can make you millions potentially, right? Get caught out on one of these local. I don't, it's, not, it's not even local, is it, bro? It's not. Even, it's not even these small hall shows. It's proper big stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rather than this guy's got a Cambridge degree, he's a professor, right? It don't mean jack compared to monetary values. Doesn't mean nothing. Right, Honestly, mad. doesn't mean nothing. These guys are making huge huge amounts of money yeah. you know for f to just basically be going on a show and fighting guys who have no experience you know like i saw I, I read something the other day an article and it was quite funny it was like it was like this whole thing now it's basically about ksi and jake paul how they don't like each other and and tom and tommy fury's just been caught in the middle you know what i mean he's just getting passed around between them both and just earning millions of pounds in the making do you know what i mean so yeah. for him it's good they're just using him between them and you know what i don't think i don't think you can fault him man he's doing well <laughs> yeah and speaking about all this circus at the moment right i don't want to call it a circus that's a bit degrading to be honest it's, it's, it's a thing of its own right now um you were at the ksi versus Fornia fight, right? Yes. Yeah, With no, Tommy yeah. Fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put some clips up as to what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few TikTok videos going around. Bit of a scuffle. None of that from me. I just break them fights up. Unless I'm getting in the ring and getting paid for it. That's different. Cool. <laughs> what you were there live, VIP. What happened, man? What what was the script with that? Uh, so <clears throat> I don't even want to give it airtime, but I will. So as 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 I what from the understanding I know, it was a man named Idris Virgo. Um, who is a boxer, professional boxer, and basically he's been trying to get onto this YouTube scene for years now. You know, he's trying to get hold of people like Jake Paul, uh, Tommy Fury, uh, KSI. I think they're friends. I think they spar. They, they do a bit of sparring. He helped KSI out, so I don't think he's going to fight KSI. But basically, long story short, he's trying to get onto this avenue of fighting because he went on that Love Island show. Apparently, I read a comment and it was like, who are you? You went on Love Island for four days and nobody matched up with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he basically, he's... So they got something in common then? They yeah. both went on Love Island? Yeah, but one of them just come out with 100k and the other one come out with like two, three million. So it's a big difference, you know. Um, so a lot of people don't even know who he is, but as far as I know, he, you know, he's in good shape and he, he's, he trains hard and he's a boxer looking for fights. He fought Anthony Taylor and I know Anthony Taylor's doing his rounds. Any show that 
there's a boxing show on. Anthony Taylor's fighting. He's probably one of the most active fighters there is. So fair play to him. Bless his heart. He's trying, you know, isn't it? He's, he, he's I've never trying. met a man to talk so much crap, but you know what? <laughs> I, uh, I respect him for, for the fighting he the does. Hustle, it? Yeah. yeah, man, he's there. He's making his bread, so I can't fault him. So, yeah, he's um, basically started off with, you know, put it this way. For, Ke for Idris Virgo, it's win-win, you know. He's, he loses this fight. No one ever expected him to, to win. And he's made a lot of money in the making, probably the most he's ever going to make in his life. For Tommy Fiore now, if you win this fight, no big deal. You should have beat him. He's a bum. And if he... If you lose, you lost to a YouTuber. There you go. Well, he's not necessarily just a YouTuber, but if you lose... Your career is done. So there's, there's and there's no, he's got no that, chance with the big boys yeah, in the real boxing exactly. world. Exactly, and he's got no money. You know, he won't get any good money for that fight. So it's basically like, what do we do now? I'm not going to fight you. I've got nothing to to prove to you. So he's come over because he's doing everything he can to get this fight. If you look at his social media now, he's still posting up videos and stuff. So he's doing everything he can to potentially get this fight across the line, just stirring up trouble, this and that. So he's come over, he shook John's hand. You know, everyone loves John, showing John respect. Says so something along the lines of, "Oh, you don't want to fight me?" Blah 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 blah. Um, and 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 he was basically just like, "Listen." I'll fight you right now. Because I ain't going to fight you in the ring, but I'll just fight you right now. Let's go outside to the car park. <laughs> Dropped it. So I told him, he said, all right, cool. I said, I'll fight you right now then. So, so they stood up, um, then a little scuffle, nothing big. And then that was the end of it, basically. Security got involved. No one could do anything. And uh, it just Virgo and I was posting that all over his Instagram, trying to get a bit of following. And Tom's just not interested because, as, as he stated, it's a, another bum looking for a payday. You know, and at the end of the day, I, c I can see it from both perspectives, though. You know, it's nothing to Tom. He's not going to get any money. I can see where it is from Idris Virgo's perspective. He's already got his foot in the door to try and get a big fight made. You know, I can see where it is from both perspectives, but I don't think he needed to come over and get into a man's space like that and ask him to come and fight him da -da 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 for a bit of clout. I think it was wrong, to be honest with you, but listen, it's done. No, I mean, nothing happened. It was nothing big. Just a little scuffle trying to, trying to hype up a fight that isn't there. You know, why am I going to fight you for 20 grand when I can go and fight KSI for 10 million? You know, yeah. very, very simple maths, isn't it? While we're on the topic, right? Tommy Fury went into the ring afterwards. Yep, yep. Confronted KSI, talking about a mega fight happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the script with that? Well, as far as I know, um, they're set to fight, you know. We don't have a date, we don't have a time, and we don't have a location. But I know that they are set to fight because at the end of the day, Tom beat Jake Paul, KSI and Jake Paul don't like each other. KSI's route now is let me smoke Tommy Fury and then go and smoke Jake Paul and then I'm the best, I can hang my gloves up, call it a day, I'm the best influencer fight out there. It's obviously not gonna go his way because KSI is even more useless than Jake Paul. KSI, I would beat KSI now. I would fight KSI right now and beat him now. So that's going to be a clip, by the way. <laughs> That'll be a clip. <laughs> that's going to be a clip. <laughs> so he's, he's useless, you know what I mean? He's, um, I respect where he's coming from. He's training hard. He's doing well, you know what I mean? Um, but it's one of them. He's, he's, he's useless, do you know what I mean? What, okay. Um, so let me just look at it from a devil's ad advocate point of view, right? Yeah. So when you say useless, bro, yeah. like, um, from the fans' point of view, in terms of YouTube fans, I'm talking about, right? Are we, are we referring to them? 10 year old children well you know their perspective let's just say <laughs> <laughs> it's drawn a lot of people in right they're saying okay he's got a good track record now he hasn't he hasn't been beaten right so when you say useless from your perspective as a professional what makes you say useless what do you what weaknesses do you see what makes you think he's not on tommy's level is it is it like he's like a footwork people like swarms no but i'm talking about technique wise oh, yeah, or technique, ability yeah, or, he's miles off yeah. technique wise he's miles off he just he just comes in like this and then throws any shots he can. You know, with a, a professional boxer like Tom, for example, he's just going to stand back, let you miss your big swinging shots like you would in the street. Have you ever seen a boxer fight a normal guy in the street? You know, it's near, it's near enough unfair because the guy will come in, he'll run in with big, massive swinging shots. All you got to do is step back, move out the way, bang, yeah, gone. Standard. That's all that's going to happen. Jake Paul did a better job, you know. So I think, and who's KSI beat? He's fighting guys like Swarms who are doing circles in the ring. 
You know what I mean? When he, he's running away, he's literally running away from the man you're supposed to fight. So then you're going to fight, you know, I just, listen, it's just easy, easy, easy money, but I love KSI's confidence. You know what I mean? Because even when they got into the ring, Tom was towering over him. You know what I mean? He's about three widths of KSI. But I love KSI's confidence. I think it'll be um, a good fight for both of the pockets. And that is about it. I think the Jake Paul and the KSI fight, uh, Jake Paul and um, Fury fight, I think that was more interesting. I know that was more interesting. We, we, we spoke about Jake Paul and there's an element of uh, Jake Paul being underestimated. So do you think the same thing's happening right now with KSI? Do I think he's been underestimated? No. I think he's been underestimated. People might say that I'm, you know, I've got a biased opinion on it, but I'm going to underestimate him against a professional boxer who is, who's hurting people, you know, when he's, when he's in training camps, you know. I'm, you'll see yourself, man. I, there's only so much talking I can do to back it up, but all I know is, yeah, KSI's done all right against a few nobodies. Who's he fought now? Fornia, Joe Weller, Logan so Paul, Muay Thai, elbows, Fornia in the head, uh, knocked him out cold. Fornia was 40 years old, sass. Plus, he wasn't the best of But then Calibre. again, I'm not just going at KSI because then you've got to look at Jake Paul's track record as well. He fought Anderson Silver at nearly, what was he, about 80 years old. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, this is what I'm not understanding is I'm also a fan of MMA and I've seen... Tyrone Woodley knocked people out with big overhand rights. I've seen Anderson Silva's um, his work. These guys should not be getting beat by Jake Paul. But you see when they wave this in front of your face, it's different. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't think Nate, Nate Diaz will take a check. I think it's too much of a gangster to take a paycheck from Jake Paul. So I don't. I think that's going to be an interesting fight. But anyone he fights has a paycheck. Do you know what I mean? Six, Listen, seven if, weeks. if Nate Diaz loses, ah, oh, man, I, I, I'll, I'll be good, bro. Like, yeah. Because I like Nate Diaz a bit. I do like Nate Diaz. He's a G, I mean? man. He's a G, man. Let's get real, man. He's yeah. a G. So uh, come on, man. Don't, like don't let it down, man. He barely speak, but I like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always high in it. <laughs> Yeah, it's what I have. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, you know. But I feel as though it, it'll be it'll be an easy fight for him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm underestimating KSI to an extent against professional boxers. Yeah. But in the YouTube scene, don't get me wrong. I think he's good. I think he's good in the YouTube scene. You know what I mean? Good. That's it. You know, I don't think he'd beat Jake Paul, and I don't think he'd beat Fury. But I like that he's in there and he's in the mix. He's just making it a bit more exciting, you know? And I wish all the best to him, you know what I mean? I respect him. He's good, you know what I mean? I, I know Deji, Deji's sound guy as well. Deji's a good down-to-earth guy, man. He's so, significantly mm. improved. Deji, let's Yo, talk about Deji he for went a second. from not to 60, bro. His first few fights, I was yeah. like, what are you doing in the ring, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Who did he fight? I can't remember who he fought. I can't, I can't but remember I was like, who he fought. Yo, that's some death sentence, bro. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? He fought Swarms the other day, didn't he? Beat yeah, yeah. Just that fight, you look good, man. Yo, you look good, man. I give you that. You look really, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the Mayweather fight changed him, innit? Ah, that was it. The Mayweather fight. We yeah. saw him there for that. You know, that was just. It was just a hiding. But listen, at the end of the day, you know, he's there for the paycheck. You know, what I mean, you're never actually gonna think. I mean, I hope he didn't, but you're not actually gonna think that you're ever gonna beat Mayweather. You know, what I mean, I would go in there for a nice paycheck. I'm yeah, not gonna standard. beat him. Nah. Yeah, I mean, anyone would. You know, yeah. you know, you know what's gonna get in there. Maybe when you're 50, you got a chance in it. <laughs> That's it. The guy by, by the time he's nearly, in, by the time he's in a wheelchair, once Mayweather's in a wheelchair, then I'll beat him. <laughs> but right now, not me, not Deji, not you. No one's beating him. Do you but know what I mean? to the point, like after that fight, the guy went. The yeah. guy did well. The guy has improved. Like, putting the work in, man. Putting the work. Because I remember talking to him at the last fight, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I'm looking to fight again." This is when he was in Dubai, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I'm looking to fight again." And I was like, "All right, what are you looking for?" And he was like, um, "He said, yeah, I'm looking for anything. He said, "I'll fight anyone right now." And he said, "This is what Deji said himself." This is this is this is what Deji said. Deji said, "I I don't want JJ to fight uh, Tommy Fury." He says, "I don't think it would end well for him." He says, "And I've told him before, but he doesn't want to listen." That's what his own brother really? said to publicly. him publicly. Yeah, he said, "Well, he said it to me." Okay, he said it to me, and then one of the other guys. That's enough. So that's it. We're dropping it today. <laughs> but yeah, so Deji doesn't believe that his brother will beat him. But this is what I mean. This is why I like Deji, man, because he's down to earth guy. You know what I mean? He's, he, he says it as it is. That's what Deji's like. Whereas KSI, I don't really know him like that to say what he is, but, <clears throat> you know, he's at the top of the country, isn't he? Yeah. He's doing well. He's got confidence more than anything. And you know what? I wish him the best. I hope they both get in there, make a good few quid, and both come out safe. You know what I mean? Shake hands, maybe even be friends. Well, that's look yeah. what uh, KSI and Logan Paul have done now. They've had their fights, and now they're making money. It's funny that KSI and Logan Paul 
get along, but Jake Paul and KSI, they don't actually like each other. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, so they're set to fight, aren't they? Cool, man. Just to um, move to the concluding topic, yeah? Back to KD performance, right? What does the future look like for KD performance? What's your plans, ambitions, goals? Nice, good question. Um, goals for KD performance, we're going to take over. We are going to take over. Um, we're going to carry on working with... Um, combat athletes whether they are professional or amateur you know i'm working with some high level good good fighters but i still love training the amateur guys you know i love it um <clears throat> so i'm still gonna carry on go down to as many gyms as i can spread the word about strength and conditioning get more experience myself keep learning passing this on to the younger generations that are hopefully going to get into the ring and do a bit of work themselves keep them off the streets keep them um and basically i just want to educate people into the benefits of strength and conditioning and, and why you should be doing it because like i said a lot of pe older coaches don't believe in it and a lot of these newer guys who are getting into boxing don't even know of it because them coaches aren't passing it on aren't, aren't wanting to do that so that's what we want to do we want to carry on training as many as many high profile clients as we can taking them up to the top you know the end goal is that we want to get a, a few athletes winning some world champions you know that's that is the end goal it sounds like you want to cement yourself as one of the top guys in this space 100 percent, man 100 percent. um you know i know a good few of the guys over, the, over strength and conditioning guys in the game at the minute who are doing well and you know i want to be there as well you know um i want to be up there as well working with some more high profile clients and basically just getting them to the best condition that they could possibly get in so they once they get in the ring all the fans can enjoy two guys at the top of their game going at it with each other that's that is my goal i just want people to enjoy the entertainment and you know it annoys me when i see fighters get in there and they're gassing out after you know they've got a, an eight round fight and after three rounds they're gassing out you know it makes me think to myself this isn't enjoyable now is it because we're watching that and we know you're gassed so it's a matter of time before you have a cleaning with a big shot or you're just going to get drained and you're going to be finished in a minute i do want to stop seeing that you know i want to i want to see two two guys or two women at the peak of their performance and i'm talking about strength i'm talking about the conditioning i'm talking about the mental health the recovery um i'm talking about everything you know we want to cover every avenue of that and we want to see guys go in there and just give it their all and give it the best and just um see some good sportsmanship in there you know you're already on a good trajectory bro um and i have no doubt in my mind that you're gonna go far in this space bro and you're gonna be landing bigger and bigger clients yeah i look forward to it, seeing man. your journey man um i'm just gonna end it with a few questions from our instagram page and um if you guys want to keep updated on how to ask questions, follow our Instagram and new TikTok page at Tai Kamo Podcast. Um, so yeah, this is interesting one actually. This completely seemed like a random question, but um, yeah, well, I'd really? love to get your view on it. So Saudi Arabia, the reality versus what the media portray. I, I, I think I know what the person means. So they're trying to say that, look, the media portrays it as a backward country this and that, and then we see interviews of John Fury, Tyson Fury, bigging it up, saying we've seen nothing but good hospitality from these guys. You've been there with them, travelled over. What's yeah. the reality, bro? Good question, man. Love that question. That was a top question. Yeah, Saudi, wow, what a place, you know. Um, beautiful place. Um, you know, amazing hospitality, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, before I went out there, you know, this, this westernised world, we... You know, we believe a lot of things that the media portrays about a certain place. And I'm a sort of guy that once I go somewhere, I like to talk to locals. I like to talk to people about what, what things I like. Honestly, they were they were amazing to us. Really nice to us. Um, put us up in hotels. The food. Yeah. The food in Saudi, man. Banging. And just to clarify, you're not Muslim, so you're not being biased, right? No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no. So, yeah, it's... It, Lovely place, man. I would definitely, definitely recommend to go. They're pumping millions and billions of pounds into the place to basically now make it, make it more, you know, to make, make it look more appealing to tourists, you know, because yeah. at the moment they're trying to put on things like the boxing fights. So they've had like the Joshua, the U6, all them sort of fights, Ruiz, uh, they're putting on like horse racing events, uh, golfing events. They're pumping millions of pounds in it to get it. Like I said, to, to, to make it a destination that tourists want to go, but they don't want to become as westernized as somewhere like Dubai. 
Right. You know? They want to retain their culture, their values. Yeah, they want to retain. A, yeah, hundred percent. They want to retain that, but while still moving forward, because you know we. You know, whilst I was out there, I didn't have the conversation, but you can see where it is, you know, these guys deal with oil. And as we know now, that isn't going to be around forever. And they know that themselves. So that's why now they're looking to push into other avenues. Like, have you seen the little city that they're going to be building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a few miles long. Of, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of... I think it's like 60, 70, 80 miles, and you can get from <laughs> yeah. one side to the other within 15 minutes. Mad. They're going to have everything you can imagine there. Hospitals, theatres, schools, unis, colleges everything they're gonna have everything there um so you know it was a lovely place we was based up in a gym a lot of the time we was in a hotel we was going to media meetings press conferences we were doing all that sort of stuff but day to day they treated us with the most respect ever um nothing like what the media portrays like you know harsh and like i said you know the wrong mentality you no, know what no, i'm trying no, to say listen, i don't want to say the word but you know yeah, what i'm saying in it i've spoke to people about what they think Saudi is like and how the women are and how even just, um, for example, how they punish people. Yeah, That's yeah, just to say, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we've heard all sorts of things growing up that the punishments are this, 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 this and this. And you know what? The place isn't like that. Yeah, they're strict, but they do that so that people don't do it again. So, for example, over here, if you steal a car, you might get two, three years. Over there, you steal a car, you get in 10 years. But that's an interesting point, I didn't. Check it out, bro, like... Saudi, the crime is non-existent though, for that particular reason. Yeah, so here, the same. Try wearing your nice watch, bro, in London, walking down, your hand, your hand will be chopped off by a different citizen, never this mind the it. government. Do you know that's what I mean? That's it, that's it. So there's a difference there. But yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, man. Dubai was the same though. When we went over to Dubai in uh, November, the crime over there, non-existent. You know, same, the, these places, the punishments are so severe that there isn't many people in the right mind who want to commit these crimes. And it, do you know what? It shows that it works because Dubai is expats. So people from all nationalities coming in, you think there'll be one or two bad eggs, but no, the law stays how it is. And secondly, to get that punishment, it's a high bar, by the way. It's not just like your hand gets chopped off. You need four witnesses, which is impossible to have anyway in the first place. But just the thought of getting your hand chopped off puts people off, innit? it? Yeah, that's what I mean, exactly. I didn't want to mention it, but the hand getting chopped off, you know, I spoke to people about that. I'll be honest, yeah, bro. Yeah. I was like, so what's what's the deal here? Yeah, Does, yeah. You know, if I go and da, 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 they're like, no, that doesn't really happen, you know, yeah. but... Maybe years and years and years and years ago, these things would happen. But at the end of the day, you know, you're getting long prison sentences for things that you shouldn't be doing anyway. Yeah. But here's a perfect example for you. One of the guys left his Rolex. We, we had to move hotel rooms. And uh, one of the guys left his Rolex in there, like 30, 40 grand Rolex, whatever it is. And um, one of the one of the guys who were cleaning it, they come in and they um, they basically brought it in, left a note yeah. with it and all that. Put, yeah. it, put it in a box, like wow. put it in a new little gift box with a note and was like, sorry, you left this in your last room, this, 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 this. You know, it was- <laughs> Bro, it was, if that was here, I'd be in the pawn shop, man. That's it. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Oh my God, you know, but like I say, the people are amazing. The culture is amazing. I would 100% go back, but it is expensive. Yeah. You know, there's, there's things out there. I give you, a, I give you an example. So <clears throat> we was there with uh, Roman Fury come over as well for the, um, for the fight that was in Saudi, whenever that was February, March, I think it was February. And um, so he had, he had some washing and he, uh, he was like, yeah, I want to get these clothes washed. <laughs> What's coming up, man? What's coming up? <laughs> he was like, yeah, I want to get these clothes washed. So I was like, okay. Um, so he went over to the, to the reception. He was like, yeah, just get these clothes washed, please. Blah, 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 blah. I must have given him, I think it was about three pairs of shorts four pairs of socks two t-shirts and like three boxes something like that it was like yeah yeah yeah. so there was like okay no problem i'll bring it up in um three hours so he said okay so i'm upstairs in the room now anyway he was downstairs getting some food and i hear this knock at the door and i said all right no worries um he said yeah your washing's here and i said all right no worries i'll uh i was just gonna pay it and then just get him to give me back whatever because he's not here right now anyway the the washing all comes gift box little bow on it and everything it was proper the hotel was it was a you know it was a nice hotel and i open up the bill now how much do you, how much do you think how much do you think good bloody hell this is in pounds what do you think how much <clears throat> wow, washing a few you mentioned a few shorts and stuff like that come on i don't know 50 quid try 250 really 250 <laughs> pounds so i rang him now i said oh your washing's here he says Said, yeah, yeah, I was going to pay it, but um, yeah, so I don't know, you ain't going to give this me back anyway. And then he goes, all right, how much is it? I said, 250. He says, what? <laughs> he says, what? 
<laughs> so I can't pay that. He said the, all the clothes together were worth about thirty pounds. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Should have washed it himself in the sink, innit? That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, that's man. it, man. It's, so it's quite expensive then, there. It's, yeah, but obviously yeah. the hotel we were in was nice, but it's an expensive place. You don't go to them sort of places without money, you know. Like yeah, you say, yeah. they don't get taxed yeah, like us. Sense. You know what I mean? They don't get they don't get taxed. You know, majority of your wage like we do. You know what I mean? Just out of curiosity, then, that do you know when you travel with the uh, with the Furies over? Do you do you pay for your own flights? And no, stuff no, like no, that? no, that's all covered. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, a nice perk, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's the best perk for me. Covered <laughs> by who? Um, so normally it would be whoever's in a contract. So for example, when they're signing a contract, like when he signs a contract with Jake Paul, he'll just say, "Listen, I've got ten people on my team." Um, I need flights and hotels, and that's it. Really? They deal with so the rest. Get deducted off the final pay, maybe. Uh, no, that's like work. So yeah, but like obviously it comes out of somewhere. Does it come out of his paycheck? That comes out at the end. No, or? no, it's whoever like the promoter is. What? Oh, they they pay in, in, in advance, basically, pretty much. The yeah, promoters. Must be. I don't know exactly when they right, pay right, or right. how they pay it, but all I know is that's so interesting. All I know is whatever. So if you already gets paid for his fight, it's yeah, separate yeah. to the team because without the team coming out there, yeah, there's no fight to make. Do you know what I mean? Right. So like if you 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 know for work, if you need to go down and travel to London, and you get in the train, you expect expect your work to pay for that train, don't you? Yeah, because yeah. I need to get there. Who was a promoter on this fight? I can't remember. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think they were called the Skills Company or something. Wait, like this that. is Jake Paul promoter. No, so this it was it was a it was a collab of the Saudi promoters and uh, Jake Paul's. So Jake Paul's is what is it the most valuable promotions? Yeah, and I think they were called the Skills Co or the Skills Company. Uh, I can't remember the name of them, but them guys out there they were they were top as well. Really good guys to work with, man. Ross, that is sick, bro. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Is sick. Listen, if you guys need like a full time videographer or something like that, yeah, someone to do interviews for, yeah. Listen, give me a shout, man. Put me on that expense list. That's though. it. That's <laughs> That's it. Plus one. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Um, last question, bro. Best way to reach out to be coached or to reach out to you in general? What's the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, so the best way to reach me is um, is if you go through Instagram. So it's uh, KD Performance, okay, on Instagram. You'll be able to find me on there. You can just find me over a message and uh, we can work from there. You know, like I said, whether it's online and you're anywhere in the world or whether you're based in the UK, um, and you don't mind traveling because we're based, uh, KD Performance is based in Manchester. So if you're local to Manchester, come down and um, and we can go from there moving forward. So Instagram's the best bet, yeah? Instagram is the best one, yeah, at KD Performance. Yeah, we'll put a link in the description, man. Kyle, thank you for coming on the pod, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, man. I've enjoyed it. It's been great having you on, bro, honestly. I've enjoyed it, man. I've really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on. No, man, and I look forward to seeing your upward trajectory in this space, man. And uh, look back one time and think, yo, I had this guy on the podcast, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sure we're going to do a few more in the future. 100%, if man. If you love me back on. <laughs> Run it back. Always welcome, bro. Always welcome. If you enjoy the podcast, make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe. It helps the channel more than you know. Um, with that being said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.